eternity. Our service will count for eternity. And our ministry will count for eternity. It will not be a kind of ministry, a kind of service, a kind of labor that will condemn us for all eternity. Let's come to point number three now. And point number three is the ministry, the ministries that count for eternity. The ministries that count for eternity. What kinds of ministries will those be? We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, we're looking at verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. What a ministry. Evangelism. So winning. Sowing the seed. The seed of life eternal. The seed of the word that came to the hearts of the people, convicted the people, converted the people, and made the people committed, consecrated unto the Lord. And since so back here, they were scattered abroad and they went everywhere preaching the word. We're going to do that in Jesus' name. We go everywhere preaching the word of repentance. Go everywhere preaching the word of restitution. Go everywhere preaching the word of righteousness. Go everywhere preaching the word of holiness, of purity of heart, of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Upholding holiness, exalting holiness, spreading holiness, establishing holiness everywhere we go. And that is the ministry that profits and the ministry that will make people to have a reward for all eternity. And the same thing you find in church. There are people in church that do good ministry. A kind of ministry that gives you a reward for all eternity. There's a kind of ministry in the church that will not have eternal reward. To turn the minds of the people against holiness. Against righteousness. Against sanctification. Against being raptured. And all they want to do is turn them away from Jesus and turn them away from Christ. Turn them away from salvation, from sanctification. And turn their minds towards something contrary to the standard of scripture. Anybody can preach? What kind of preaching are we doing? Anybody can sing? What kind of singing are we projecting? Anybody can pray? What kind of prayer are we praying? The kind of ministry that gives you eternal reward. That's the kind we are going to get involved with. I said that is the kind we are going to get involved with. And they that were scattered, they went everywhere preaching the word. Preaching the word. Say preaching the word. That's what will get people saved. What will get people sanctified. What gets people sustained remaining in the kingdom? Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. In Philippians chapter 1, preaching is wonderful. But look at the kind that these people are. We're looking at Philippians chapter 1, verse 13. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Paul the Apostle said, I want to tell you, I'm sowing some good seed. I'm having some good ministry. I'm having some reproductive uh, ministry too. Because many of the brethren, after looking at my suffering and my bonds and my imprisonment, and the pressures upon my life. And you see, I'm preaching the gospel. And in spite of the pressure, and in spite of the problem, I still keep on hopping on and galloping on and preaching the gospel here and there. They became bold. And they're preaching the word also. But look at verse, look at verse with him. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. That means then, when we preach the word, preach it to get people saved. Preach it to get people sanctified. The people that preach, they only preach of envy and they preach of strife. That kind of preaching doesn't get people to life eternal. And it's going, not, not going to win eternal reward. The kind, the kind that is like, you know, they're fighting. It's like they're struggling. And make his try. That one doesn't have reward in eternity. It says, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely. 
supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am saved for the defense of the gospel. I pray that we'll do it right in Jesus' name. I said we'll do it right in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, sometimes in church, um, it's good for us to keep a simple spirit, a childlike spirit. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 13 there. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 13. Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Never get to the situation as a worker, as a leader in the church, as a laborer in the vineyard. Never get to a position as a minister, as a singer, member of the choir, where you cannot be corrected. Where if the pastor preaches anything and you know, says anything that puts you right and corrects you, that they will begin to strive and quarrel and fight. And pass that fight, quarrel, strive to other people. Better is a poor and wise child who doesn't have a lot of gifts, gift to compose. Gift to sing or gift to preach. Better is a child that is poor and ignorant, but wise, than an old and foolish king. Who will no more be admonished. Titus chapter 2. I'm reading there from verse 15. These things speak and exalt and rebuke. But what? Tell me out loud. With all authority. Let no man despise thee. So we need to keep ministry simple, straightforward. A kind of ministry that saves. A kind of ministry that sanctifies. A kind of ministry that sustains the standard, keeps up the standard. A kind of ministry that shields and shepherds and takes people in the right direction. I pray God will keep us wise in Jesus' name. I need a good, good amen. amen. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 24. But none of these things moved me, Paul the Apostle said, Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of, of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. I told you that some of these people knew that when they were going to die. But they were not afraid of death. All they were interested in is to do what needs to be done at this time. And to preach the word without fear, without favor. And then if they die after that, praise the Lord, they've left the legacy behind. He said, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching, the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. That's what just need to take care and do. Do that. And then anytime you leave, you leave something good behind. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Feed the church of God. You will do that, won't you? Feed the church of God. And then it says in Numbers 28, which he has purchased with his own blood. That's the kind of ministry that endures unto life eternal. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading there from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Old lifestyle passed away. Old characteristics passed away. And old strife, struggling, conflict, contention, old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And then in verse 18, and all things of God was reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ 
and he has given us what kind of ministry? A ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry he has given us. And that ministry will help us to have reward in eternity in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. Ministry that counts for all eternity. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Let it be a ministry that endures to the end and a ministry that counts for all eternity. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, says he, that thou make all things according to the pattern should be in the mount. That's the ministry that you endure for all eternity. That you do everything, say everything, labor in every way, and preach in every way, and pray in every way, and sing in every way. As will be shown on the mount, that will get people back again to the mount of transfiguration. Singing that will transform lives, preaching that will transform lives. House fellowshipping that will transform lives, evangelism that will transform lives, and ministries that endure for all eternity and that will count for eternity. And he says, See that you do all things and say all things and labor in every form of service as was shown on the mount. And when the time comes for reward, you'll not miss your reward in Jesus' name. Making your life count for eternity. Making your time count for eternity. Making your service count for eternity. Making each day of opportunity and service count for eternity. Making your relationships, making your marriage, making your friendships, making your association, making your influence. We have a sphere of influence all around us. You influence people. Make that influence. Make your relationships count for eternity. Make your service. Make your labor. And make your ministry. Make your profession. Make your spending. Make your life's activities. Make them all count for eternity. And when the day, the time of reward comes, you will not miss your reward in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. The good, things, the good things you have that will come for eternity, the good things you have that will give you a reward when we get up there, what you do every day, every moment, every time, hold fast till I come. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the edge, to him will I give power over the nations. Revelation chapter 22 reading from verse 14. Revelation 22 reading from verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate unto the city. I pray you'll be there. Amen. I said I pray you'll be there. Amen. We'll all be there and then at that time we'll have a reward for what we have done. And if what we have done attracts the attention of the Almighty God, then we're going to be rewarded in eternity in Jesus' name. And I pray that there may nobody here that will have done things that he didn't check up and clean up and have forgiveness and have reconciliation with God and reconciliation with one another. Righteousness, restitution, a life of uprightness, so that. You settle everything here. If you have any row, any problem with anybody, the Lord Jesus, I go to him. Settle with him. Rather than do anything that will make you lose your reward in eternity. We're laboring much, sacrificing much. Let it be a kind of service, a kind of sacrifice that counts for eternity. Let's rise up and pray. We're going to talk to the Lord that you will be a man, you'll be a woman 
that will count for eternity. People like Noah, like Abraham, like Moses, like Phinehas, fight sin, fight corruption, fight pornography, fight fornication, fight immorality, fight evil. Don't fight your brethren. Don't fight your pastor. Don't fight the preacher. Don't fight our shepherd that is leading us on the way to life eternal. Fight sin. Don't don't let any sin a thing that you are supporting him or her. Don't let any backslider think that you're supporting him or supporting her. But again, see, that's the ministry that counts for eternity. That the Lord Himself will help you. That you live a life, a life that counts for eternity. Have a ministry of reconciliation. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I pray that in this project and plan, the Lord has revealed that the Lord will help us as a church, that will give a tithe of the people in every section, tithe of the people in the choir, tithe of the people among the ushers, tithe of the people among the security, tithe of the people among the youth leaders everywhere. Start with that and give that to fulfill the great commission to go out and preach, go out and evangelize, go out and plant new churches, go out and establish the church, go out and preach the gospel to every creature.